Okay, so you've been watching these videos, you've come this far, I figure it's time to get into the nitty gritty. There are several ideas that I'm working on and have studied through the process of the last few years of running this website that you may find confronting or ridiculous or actually make sense to you. So I'm going to talk about the resonance in the oral cavity and it's based on the fact that there are a, a, a million books around that talk about a heap of different things about the approaches of, of, of playing and the mechanics of playing generally based on the sensation of the person writing it. Teachers pass on what they've learnt from their teachers and from their teachers. But the reason that I've gone to the effort to do these videos and share with you what I've learnt is because it's different. Because the general consensus of the way that things work weren't working for me. I went through years of you've got to get stronger, you've got to work harder, you've got to do more and more and more, it's a physical thing. And that brute kind of approach that works for some, that do it and make great livings from it, it it's, it's totally valid. But for the next guy, if they try that approach, it may not work. And for me, I hit a limit where I was working so hard, I remember going, if I'm, I'm working so hard on a high C, if I have to work twice as hard as that to develop my upper register and play a double C, I am going to kill myself. I'm gonna, like there's people that, uh, the perforated larynxes and hernias and the whole sort of thing, from overdoing the internal compression, doing it too much, and then the Valsalva maneuver, blocking the throat off and, and, and pushing with the abdominal muscles, so all of a sudden there's this massive strain happening back in the body. And the poor trumpet's just hanging out there going, please give me some airflow and make it work. I've spoken a lot about shape, the shape of the mouth. And on the last video, video number two of the advanced section, I spoke a lot about the, the tension in the aperture corners. So I want to take the next step and um, add in the, the whole idea of what's happening inside the mouth, inside the oral cavity. Now, the, the thing that fascinates me uh, along through the years is when you read, I've, I've looked at the Jerome Callot material, the uh, Schlossberg and the Gordon, and, and you name all the methods that are out there. I've studied a lot of them, and, and, and some of them are quite contrary to each other, yet when you read deeply enough, you'll find that the same message is actually being said, but they're perceived in a different way. Okay, so they're, they're all after the end, um, the same result in the end, which is a free-flowing resonant sound. But the way of getting there through this crazy piece of pipe is often very, very, uh, very different. So we need to experiment and figure out what works for us. Uh, so firstly, I'd like to say, as, as far as the, the tongue position goes, there is a a consensus there that it is purely tongue position uh, changes the, the pitch that you play in. And I've had numerous conversations with people over the, over the last few years of their teachers refusing to even remotely look at what I'm talking about because I go outside of the, uh, the tongue position alone. Again, the idea is you've got your, your tongue, you've got the roof of your mouth, and this part here is called the cross-sectional area. And the belief is, is the cross-sectional area, as it reduces, the velocity of the air speeds up, therefore the notes go faster. Great idea, great visualization. But if that doesn't work for you, uh, if you find that you're changing your tongue position and the results aren't coming for you, you're gonna to have to start asking questions. So the tongue position and the, and the jaw position is part of the equation. And another part, of course, is the, is the lip tension. And there's so many variables within this, the amount of lip that's vibrating, the thickness of the lip, so the amount of air that you're vibrating, plus you've got the, you know, the size of the mouthpiece and the bore of the trumpet. There are so many 
different things uh, that that get uh, that contribute to the final result. But my hopefully the way that I'm going through this with you is to break down into a couple of very easy to understand concepts that you can start and internalize and recognize what you're doing. At the end of the day, you're your best teacher and you're the one that's basically experimenting with all the information that you get to find out what works for you. So I, I offer you this concept based on um, the, the, the physics approach. Now, firstly, there's a flaw in the tongue the tongue position idea. It's it's a great visualization, but scientifically it's slightly flawed because imagine this, you've got the aperture. This is where the air goes through. Now it doesn't matter whether, imagine there's a pipe and there's air going through it or there's water going through it. It doesn't really matter. And then there's the aperture at the end where the water or the air comes out. Now, <clears throat> What determines what goes through this aperture is the aperture itself. So regardless of what happens back here in the pipe, the cross-sectional area back here may reduce, but then it opens up again before the aperture. So the aperture itself is what determines what goes through it. What happens behind it is actually not that important as far as flow goes. As far as sound, the sound spectrum, all the low frequencies and high frequencies, all the harmonics in the sound, there is a major part of the sound that we produce uh, which is involved in tongue position, but it's not the tongue itself changing the pitch. It's the combination of the inner oral cavity and the tension at the lips. So I want to um, demonstrate you can hear in the sound, if I go or there's some ideas of the jaw coming forward, moving the air up. Depending on your, uh, your anatomy, your jaw shape and your structure, one of the uh, ideas or approaches is going to work for you, whether it's air direction, whether it's tongue position. Find out what works for you, but recognize the similarity between... They're, they're pretty much the same. And the, the, the whole idea of it is to stop that bottom lip from rolling under and from pinching down and from tightening up. Okay, But have a listen to the sound that's coming out of my mouth. There is a pitch element there. You can hear the sound change because of the shape of the lips and because of what's happening in the mouth. Okay, so imagine this, the whole idea of resonance, uh, two mediums vibrating at the same frequency. Okay, two mediums vibrating at the same frequency. You know, if you're in a car park and you say a word and all of a sudden it's a lot louder than the other words, because you say it at a pitch, you emit a frequency that locks into one of the frequencies in that car park. It happens in the shower, if you sing in the shower, you'll hear a note that really resonates because the amplitude is greater because the vibration coming from the body matches one of the harmonics in the room. Consider the harmonics in the pipe. If you, there's air in here and there's air in the body. We create the vibration at the lip for, from the air moving through. If we emit a frequency that perfectly matches one of the harmonics on the pipe, then you will get a resonant sound. If you emit a frequency from the body that matches a harmonic on the trumpet, you'll get a purely centered, perfectly resonant sound. If you don't quite match what the trumpet needs, then it won't sound centered. So when the whole body is doing the right thing and the body's resonating, 
then you'll get the most resonant sound out of the instrument. So if you think about that going all over the instrument when you're going to the low register, you check it out with your students. If you're getting them to open up the low register, you'll get them to go, oh no, get down to the center of the note. Or middle register. If you can recognize what's happening within the oral cavity combined with the correct tension, then you will start and find frequencies that you've never experienced before. Now, some of you might be sitting there going, for God's sake, Greg, you're being so analytical about it. Just play it. That's fine if you can just play it and if it works for you. Now, I liken this to the, the Formula One driver and the car itself. If the car's working perfectly, how do you drive the car, Mr. Driver? Ah, oh, it's simple. I put my foot on the accelerator and I go really fast. Great. What if the motor is not working so well and there's no mechanic? The driver is going to have to quickly learn how to tune up the motor of the car. So he's going to have to figure out, now, why is it that when I put my foot down, the car goes faster and then you'll see a lever and a lead and a petrol and a thing and a thing. And he'll have to start and learn about how the motor works. And that's what this is about. You've been playing long enough. You've got to a frustrated level where you go, I want to break through. I want to learn something new. Well, you've got to break it down and start and look at the absolute basics of what on earth is going on to get air to vibrate. Air molecules exist in a pipe. They're in the body. They're in the room. We want them to vibrate faster. So whether it's a, a ballad that you're playing or the second movement of the Haydn or a screaming lead trumpet thing or a Latin thing or whatever, you're going to get better at it with a better sound by understanding how this works and by recognizing oral cavity resonance and combined obviously with the aperture corner tension. If you start and pick that, then all of a sudden you'll realize you're not pinching in the middle of the lip. You don't have to blow as hard. As, as I've said many times, there, there's a lot less air traveling through the horn as you get higher. So stop trying to punch so much air through there. And when you recognize the correct shape, and shape involves the aperture corner tension and the resonance of the oral cavity, when you find that exact shape, you can put the instrument on, get the air in, <laughs> deliver the air, release it without pushing and without kicking, and the notes will happen. So your fluency will get better. The resonant sound is going to be better because you're playing in the center of the notes. So the benefits from that are uh, more endurance because you're efficient. Your muscles aren't wearing out. You'll just breathe correctly, breathe freely, move air freely, and you'll get through the registers and play whatever it is that you're working on in a heck of a lot easier manner. So experiment with this. Sit there, hum a note. Mm, take a full breath, feel the air effortlessly come out of the body. Mm, close your eyes. Mm, ah, There's more to the emission of frequency from the body based on shape than generally what people give thought uh, to. And there's not that much written about it that I can find. Um, it's a very, very interesting concept. So if you check that out, You will have seen in books, some people talking about the hiss position, the hiss of the tongue. Again, it's leading you into the thought processes. Oh, it's the position of the tongue um, creating the, the notes. Uh, I've seen Arturo talking about it. He goes, I arched the, um, my tongue up to the roof of my mouth and the air speeds up so I play higher. And it works for him. It's fantastic. What a great visualization. Just keep in mind, 
that when you watch him doing it, all this is working as well. So there is the aperture tension requirement as well. Now, of course, I'm playing louder up there, so I'm kicking more air. If I don't kick more air, Okay, I know I keep going on with the same concepts, but it's very important that you recognize this. If you don't put more air through, you can still change pitch, but you will not uh, have much volume going on. We wanna keep the body ho, 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 resonant. That's the hard thing to actually understand, is that when players put on a Maynard album or put on a Maurice Andre album, and here when they're doing the, the really high stuff, get your mind to think, in their body, they're still, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. It's still resonating here. It's not tightening up. But when we try to do it, we tend to tense everything up when we try and get into that upper register. If you can get your mind around, there's not as much air traveling through there and the body's remaining relaxed, you'll be more than happy to uh, start an experiment with, with oral cavity and, and, and aperture corner tension. When, and when you experience that and then you listen to their sound, close your eyes, you go, I can actually get that. I can understand that. So it's a total reprogramming of the way that you're thinking about playing. Uh, but it works because you back off that force of the air and all that uh, that you try and push through it. You go, well, you don't actually need to do that. Um, so you, you'll check out, you'll see the changes in the face. pinch and then you can rely on the abdominals for volume or you can do it really really softly and do it softly to develop it as I said in video one of this series softly is the way to develop add volume as you go okay uh, you might think I'm mad <laughs> that's totally fine but when you break it down uh, check out the Bernoulli principle uh, to to figure out that whole flow thing. And check out Arthur H. Pernard, The Fundamentals of Musical Acoustics, just to get an idea of vibration and, and what needs to work. If you're prepared to take that next step, I guarantee the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. But I got to a point where I'm going, I, this is good, I can't go and read that next page or chapter or paragraph, whatever, because it's too much information. And the more you break it down, the more complex it gets. But for the process of just playing the damn trumpet, a little bit of an idea about this stuff may very well be the uh, key to unlocking where you've had some problems. So check it out and experiment. Let me know what you think because this um, whole concept is, is pretty new and I think it's really fascinating. So uh, enjoy, practice. Um, I actually haven't figured out what I'm putting in video for yet, so you'll just have to watch and, and go and check it out. Hope you've enjoyed this. Check out uh, the rest of the site, and we'll see you soon. All the best.